So I just pray that God meets me in this moment because this is the one part of my testimony that gets me really emotional because this is what I kind of dealt with for years before I fully submitted my life to Christ. And it was the very thing that plagued me for a while and I didn't have a good understanding. So as I speak these things, I pray that it frees someone else who may be feeling the same way that I once felt. So when I first gave my life to Christ, um, my idea of being a Christ-filled believer was that I had rules that I had to obey. And that if I didn't obey these rules, I would go to hell. Simple as that. Yet no one really elaborated on the spiritual demise to these decisions. Like I didn't learn about ungodly soul ties until, um, thank, thank you Jesus for placing me in a church and Bishop Pitts had actually wrote a book about um, breaking ungodly soul ties. And the Lord just led me to it. I was seeking him. I was searching for a word and some deliverance in one season. And I came across that book. And for the first time in my life, I'm like, where has this been all my life? I had kind of believed that if I would have read that book before I went into my rebellious or my prodigal years I would call it probably would have saved me and then the Lord even had to free me of that because I began condemning myself for things that I thought I should have known whereas God was using my current season in that moment of that time to be able to help free people who are watching because he knew there were some things that he took me through that I would overcome And that with my overcoming, it would be someone else's hope when they watched me and they seen what I did and how I sought God, how I got into my Bible. I mean, I had people around me even when I got my gift of tongues and I shared these experiences. So I needed to go through those prodigal years, those rebellious years, so that when God brought me out, I would have a little bit behind me to back me up. Like it wasn't me just saying, look, God is good. But it's those who seen me in my dark place come into the light. And so just to go back to where I began when I started speaking about when I first gave my life to Christ and the things that I believed about the Bible, which was just that it was a law book, just like the government system. And if you broke these laws, you went to hell and just not knowing about condemnation. I didn't know about ungodly soul ties and spiritual contamination, that disease that plagues you well after you committed the sin and I just want to share this with someone because I feel like that's the hardest part about giving your life to Christ is when you feel filthy you know you don't really understand the freedom and the gift of our salvation and what that gift of grace really means and then that kind of just makes you take advantage of something that God gave us as a gift to be appreciated because it is readily available to us yet and still there are things that we there's places and positions like that God has to get us in so that we can receive it because honestly I didn't really receive Romans 8 until like my late 20s if I can be honest with you I've always heard pastors preach about condemnation and that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus yet and still I didn't realize like okay what is the process to rid myself of condemnation like what should i be doing how should i be thinking because right now i just kind of feel guilty and full of shame because i let god down and then the bad part was that i knew better but i didn't do better so i just kind of kept that on me i kept that feeling of guilt on me so heavily because i could remember when i got into situations where i would pray like god save me god if if you get me out of this this time i won't do it again And then I would do it again. And then I would do it again. And honestly, it was because I looked at grace and forgiveness as something that God just is going to do no matter what, which is true. His grace is sufficient for us and his forgiveness is readily available to us. Like we can repent, we can come to him and surrender it and he'll cleanse us. And yet and still the enemy had a whole different you know, plan going on on the other side of that, which was to keep me feeling like I'm God's like rebellious child that he'll never receive again. And that it's like that story we heard of when we were children, the boy who cried wolf, where 
you know you keep lying to God and you keep lying to God and then when you finally get to a place where you actually want him to listen to you he won't hear you and you know I just didn't know how dangerous that was and I would always say you know what well, the Lord will forgive me the Lord knows my heart and so I was just voluntarily putting myself in this sinful cycle just expecting God to save me out of it knowing what it would cost me in the moment but I just didn't truly realize what it would cost me down the line because serving God and inviting him into your space and your heart will make you get to a place where you don't want to sin you know where you won't want to fulfill the sinful natures and the flesh desires but I just was not there and it took me to know that I was not there when I just kept sinning and I couldn't understand like what was the missing factor I love Jesus I accepted him into my heart but why am I not feeling the evidence of it with the way that I'm responding why is it not so easy for me to walk away from this sinful lifestyle and it was because I wasn't inviting him in to transform me I wasn't seeking after thoughts of the spirit or things of the spirit but I was willing to just keep craving after things of the flesh and he led me to words like Galatians 5 16 that says so I say let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves and then to add to that layer was when I came across my next scripture that saved me which was Romans 8 6 that says so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace and I just didn't know that and that was the New Living Translation and it just simply resonated with me when I read it and I couldn't forget what I read which is where my consciousness came from where it's like I can't act like I don't see what God is trying to tell me so I say that to say yes grace is free it is readily available we can almost reach up and grab it right down from heaven because it's a gift that jesus left to us it's ours and still free will is ours too so when it comes time to ask the lord for forgiveness that cost of playing with the repentance is where the enemy uses condemnation but the lord is just saying like i love you more than that i love you past your sins just as you are that's what i had to learn for myself is that there was nothing that i could do that would separate me from god's love because i knew in tough times who i who i had to call on when i didn't have family or i didn't have friends who understood me or who i even felt comfortable because I dealt with so much shame to share certain things with is that I could go to my father and he'd hear me but I also would have to come in such a posture of repentance where I'm like Lord I'm serious I know I've said it before but this time I'm when I spoke when I prayed the prayer thy will be done and not my will be done I knew that was when I made that declaration and I decreed there would not be a Shiree's plan. There could not be me living out the world, living in this world the way I once was comfortable living because I've given the Lord total access to come and shake everything up. If that meant I had to lose friends, if that meant that I had to stop going into places and that whole idea that I've created a lifestyle based off of this thinking, I was totally okay with the Lord renewing my mind because I was tired and afraid. I feared the Lord. And it wasn't because I be believed he was punitive. It was because I didn't feel like I was in his will in the way that I knew I should have been because I was called to greater. I didn't grow up like that. You know, I was a youth ministry teacher who had even advised the children to stay in his protection, stay in his will, so that when harm did come, you'd have that confidence that he'd protect you and you wouldn't have to deal with the deceitful enemy who would make you to believe that he's not good, that he won't show up. But when you're truly rid of condemnation and all of that spiritual disease, that spiritual cancer that eats at you, 
you'd be more confident knowing when you're in his will that when I say no weapon formed against me shall prosper, it's because I know his word is true because I'm in a posture right now where I've received his word in my heart and I believe it to be true because I'm living according to his will. I'm doing what he would have me to do. I know when he assigned me to things and I say yes to it, that pleases him. And so there's a certain hedge that you have or there's a certain hedge that you're confident that's around you when you're doing his will. And I just wasn't experiencing that. I was afraid that, you know, he forsake me or I didn't know my God. How about that? I didn't know that he was so loving and he was so compassionate and that he truly does not sleep nor slumber. So those nights when I was in the club and I was running from bullets and I could have been a headline or those nights when I was kicking it with people who weren't for me or didn't have my best interest that I could have been a headline. But by his grace, but by his grace, he saved me. And he knew that what I went through, he had prepared a moment for me to share these things so that when someone else comes behind me and thinks how I used to think and say, Lord, you can't use me. I used to apologize over and over again and I didn't mean it. And you won't believe me this time that he'll embrace you and his arms has never closed and they've always been open. And he'll let you run right back to him and say, welcome home. I've been waiting on you. I've been the one who sustained you through all of those nights, through all those crazy chaotic events that you got yourself into. It was me who got you up out of that when you don't really know how you got up out of situations and that car was coming and you seen it coming and before you know it you opened your eyes and you were still alive it was because I saved you for a greater time and a great greater moment to share this thing with someone who needs to hear this or that time when you were leaving the club and there was bullets racing and they were flying everywhere and they had no name attached to it and it could have been you it was me who was your shield or that time that you were just somewhere you knew you shouldn't have been and your spirit was just giving you this unction to leave and you felt stuck because you didn't use wisdom when you allowed that person to come get you and you felt like lord how am i going to get out of this how can you get me out of this and you gave me strategy and plan and i looked up and realized it was me who could have been that headline it was me who could have been, who probably should have been, but you wouldn't let it be. And I just went on a slight tangent of all of the memories of God's saving grace that I can remember in moments where they mattered the most to me, the, the ones that were almost like pivotal, like where I'm like, Lord, that really could have been me. You know, I could have been someone's headline. My mom could have gotten that call, yet you saved me. There's things that people don't even know I've made it out of. And I know at an appointed time, you'll give me this word and everybody can hear it together, family included. And everyone can be blessed by the testimony of how your sovereign hand has always saved me. And I don't want this to just be my moment. I know I'm sharing my testimony, but I want you to be able to realize that if you're listening to this testimony, there are things that each and every one can testify that we've overcome. Things and moments that we just can't even explain. We can't even make it make sense how we got up out of it. How something came up on us and we just had that something told me not to do x y and z moment and just be reminded that that something is the holy spirit he was saving you because he has so much more and that more is your responsibility to find out what do you want me to do with what you've given me all of this pain how can i turn it into some type of purpose because i see people who look just like me and I don't really know why I don't do the things I used to do, but I just don't want to do it and know that even in that not wanting to do what you used to do is a renewal. It's a deliverance from a certain place that you used to be in that now God is trying to lead you and have you draw closer to him so that he can help you sort out what's next. How do I take this ashes? 
these things, these mistakes, these these failures, these misfortunes, and how do I make it work for my good? Instead of sitting with it and letting it torment me, how can I use this very thing to bring life and light to other people? Because I know there's people who are just like me who need to hear what I have to say. Who needs to know that you can make a mistake and not be a mistake? Who needs to know that you can fail and still not be a failure? Because you have a savior. You have Jesus Christ, your Lord, who has given you the gift of grace, who has given you that opportunity to come to the throne and lay down who you used to be and be made new into the new creation that you are once you receive him as your Lord and savior. Who can set you apart and make you holy? And take all the junk and gunk and all the stuff that you carried all of your life and renew it and cleanse you of it and make that thing that used to be shameful and that thing that you used to be so guilty to speak about become your freedom. So now that I'm on freedom, there's things that I want to help you with by giving you some of the strategies and intel that God has given me on how to rid myself of condemnation. Because as much as I can talk about condemnation, we can talk and discuss the problem of it and all the different symptoms of it. But I think we need to get to a place where now we speak about the solutions because there are people who need that now. They need that saving grace now. They need to feel God's glory in that situation now. And so I want to go into a few things that I believe the Lord wants me to give you in this moment because these are things I receive from myself that has helped free me. I went before God raw, naked. I didn't go trying to put on this facade because one thing I know about God is that he knows my heart. So the things I don't utter, I know he can search and he can find within my heart. And so I I had to go to God and just truly surrender everything. I had to lay out and be honest that I needed to be saved. I wanted to feel renewed. I didn't like the way that I treated him. And if he could in that moment, could you let me feel your power, your presence? And I was just willing to say like, Lord, come into my home right now whatever I need to do to feel that you're with me I need to feel right now I don't care if it's just a sense of relief where I just have tears flow and I know that this is the release because I feel you present and near I just wanted to feel him but I had to be honest and be humble and say that I've made mistakes and I don't want to be beaten up for it anymore I want to feel what you want me to feel. I want the promises of God to be the promises for me. And that also just tied into accountability. I began to go back into my past and correct my wrongs. And I didn't look at myself as being prideful or having ego and saying, well, that happened so many years ago. It doesn't matter anymore. I was willing to understand that this was something that God needed me to do to find me presentable before his people. I needed to be holy enough to know, I needed to be in a place of holiness, I should say, to know that there's nothing that I'm not willing to do for God in order to show him that I'm fit for service. And so then that led me um, to the scripture from James 5.16 that says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayers of the righteous person is powerful and effective and effective or then one translation says availeth much and so I had to go back and reconcile you know with certain people and not reconcile in a way where I'm saying like I had to be back in their um, presence but I just needed to ask them to forgive me reconcile that matter with the Lord so that when, when I went back to the altar and I wanted him to receive me that he needed to know like look Lord I'm willing to go this far back and I can do this for you because I want to be fit I want to be pleasing before your eyes. I want my ways to be pleasing before you. And I didn't want anything to hold me up. And so that was one of the other things that I did, which was I became more accountable. Another thing that helped me, believe it or not, was um, discussing my childhood traumas. I had not realized how much freedom I would receive after I spoke about things that I had never shared before until I did it. I felt a sense of power and relief when I started sharing things because it was like me being humble before God and saying 
I want to get rid of everything, every offense, everything that I've ever just allowed to rule me, have power over me. I release before you and I am nothing. I'm an open book. I'll share my whole entire life to show you I want to be free. I want to be delivered. And I wasn't using my mouth for destruction. I wasn't looking to condemn anyone as much as I was looking for God to see me fit before people who would look just like me, who would share situations with me and feel shameful. And I have to encourage them and let them know, no, it's freedom. It's freedom, sweetheart, into talking about the things that happen to you and not from a place where you're trying to beat up the person because that leave that in God's hands. You know, vengeance is the Lord's and let him vindicate you furthermore. But it's to get it off of you because there's so much guilt. There's so much shame. There's so much pain and trauma associated with it that I just wanted to speak it out. Just be free of all forms of condemnation. And then the third thing became the word of God. I had to start seeking God with my full heart. I had to acknowledge him in every conversation because I needed his presence. I needed the Holy Spirit to meet me in conversations because I knew I would get those who would oppose what I was doing. My voice was disrupting systems and the enemy did not like that. So I had to start reading more of God's word. Um, I started looking at his prophets and his servants and those who have put resources out there like books and I started reading more books about freedom and freedom from condemnation and ungodly soul ties and, you know, breaking spiritual assignments off of your life and, you know, just releasing that guilt from your past, being released from the guilt of your past into the freedom of your future. And then another thing that I needed is a revelation of the renewing process, the ING, the continual process that each day I wake up and I put my best foot forward that God is honoring and I'm not despising my small victories, but I'm clapping for the different changes that I was receiving in, you know, my initial season of walking into the newness of how it feels to not live with condemnation, which then leads me into the next thing, which is when I had to learn about when I renew my mind, I have to start thinking about the mind and that if I'm trying to achieve the mind of Christ, then I need to take things captive. So normal thoughts that I would just ignore, no, I had to put them in their rightful place and be conscious of the fact that there's a disposal. There's a disposal process and that when I have these bad thoughts or when I have these condemning thoughts that I need to throw away immediately and apply God's truth to my mistakes so that I don't feel like a failure even though I fail or that I don't feel like a mistake even though I made some mistakes. And that just kind of all came with knowing the word of God. Once I started studying, I started applying things to combat these emotions and just giving myself patience and grace the same grace I gave to others or that I give to others I had to also give to myself I was so honest and I was so transparent that I was aiming for perfection that I didn't see um reason for me to be flawed when I knew better and I was putting these high expectations on myself so that when I felt like I failed in a way I would just beat myself up longer you know, I would, it, it could be something as simple as I go into my prayer closet and I pray all morning and I walk out into the very thing that I ask God to help me with and I fail. And I look at myself as if I'm a failure because I'm like, how could I have not, you know, overcome this situation when I just spent time with God? And God is just saying, apply my word to you. Apply my truth to that matter so that then you'll see that you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength just lean on my strength in those moments when you want to know how to respond to people before you respond think of me think on the certain things that I want you to think on which is Philippians 4 8 and so once I started putting these things into motion I started noticing a change in myself and it was just for me easier to recover it was easier for me to just bounce back and go back to my original position which was I felt good you know I didn't let the enemy make me feel like I had to be 
perfect while trying to rid myself of condemnation. I had to just be reminded that it's a day-to-day journey, that it's a marathon and not a sprint. You know, that I won't get it all in one day, but what I will receive is God's love, his mercy, and his favor as I continue to walk day to day, trusting him to deliver me from it. And so I hope that with this message and scriptures included, that you go seek out those scriptures, you meditate on those scriptures, and you ask the Lord to reveal to you what it is that, how he wants you to apply that to your life. And it may not look like my story. It may not be synonymous but it will be the same favor it will be the same grace it will be the same god our lord and savior jesus christ who is giving you the grace who has told you that there is no condemnation in me and that you can be received washed clean white as snow and i can renew you and make you a new creation and nothing of your past no lie that the enemy has ever told you can keep you bound but you can be free and you can be free indeed because who the sun sets free is free indeed and so i want to close this video out in prayer because i believe that to seal every word that god has given me today for his people i have to cover them in such a way as i need to cover myself but most importantly there are someone who is there's someone who's listening who heard something and from my testimony has been forever changed and blessed and i want them to be able to hear this prayer and if you're still listening and you'd like to experience freedom from that condemnation that guilt that shame all of those things that have been contaminating your spirit from years then just repeat this small prayer after me dear lord i admit that i am a sinner in fact i have never claimed to have been a saint i have lived a life that hasn't been pleasing before you and i know that i've been carrying condemnation that has been weighing me down and keeping me from receiving you i now accept my past for truly being what it was it wasn't pleasing before you and i ask that you forgive me from all of my sins so that i can walk in the freedom of my future i believe that jesus died for me i believe that in three days he rose again with all power in his hands and also in his hands were gifts that he released to me the gift of grace for me to be saved and set free the blood he shed that was payment for my sins and have now set me free from bondage. I now give to you my life and say, do whatever you want to do from this day forward. I believe you will help me every day to live in a way that pleases you. I love you and I thank you for receiving and embracing me as one of your own. And so that now I can spend eternity with you In Jesus' name I pray, amen.